President, please be seated. The court is back in session. And uh, the floor is given to the co prosecutor and uh, also to the lead co lawyer to, re to put questions to this, this witness. You may not receive. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Witness. Um, I'll be picking up. Can you hear me? I'll be picking up uh, where my colleague left off this morning. Uh, you were talking about a leader from the North Zone uh, who came with Kai Pak to the first January Dam, uh, whose name was Chon. Uh, Mr. Witness, uh, we have a document in evidence, E3 2165, uh, which is a list uh, from S21 of uh, prisoners from the Old North Zone or Central Zone. Number 21 on that list is a person named Kom Chan alias Chon, who is identified as the Secretary of Sector 43. My question to you, uh, was your district, Santuk District, part of Sector 43 of the North Zone? And does this refresh your recollection that the person named Chan, who you saw at the first January Dam worksite, was the leader of Sector 43? Answer. Kai Pok was at Barai district, Kampong Thom. He was in uh, Chan Long village. He was in Chan Long village, Barai district, Kampong Thom province. I'm asking you about the person named Chon, who was with Kai Pak at the first January Dam site. Do you remember, was this person Chon, was he the secretary or leader of Sector 43 of the North Zone? John was at John. the North Zone. I uh, did not know his village or commune. Mr. Witness, do you remember a period where the local leaders of the Khmer Rouge in the North Zone were arrested or disappeared? and were replaced by people from the southwest zone. Answer. I did not recall it. Let me read something. Uh, as part of your testimony in your OCIJ interview, D-166-156, this document again, D-166-156, ERN Khmer 00321785, English 00330718, French 00402981. This is what you testified in your OCIJ interview. Quote, I do not remember the name of the commune chiefs in the Khmer Rouge regime, but they were all taken to be killed. End of quote. 
And at the start of the very next page of your interview, in describing a district combatant unit in which you worked, you stated, and I quote, the unit chairmen were killed in the Khmer Rouge regime, end of quote. Can you please tell us what happened to these local cadres in your area, such as the commune chiefs and unit chairmen, who you testified were killed during the Khmer Rouge regime? Answer. They killed all unit chiefs who were arrested. I uh, did not know where they were killed. When did this take place? Was this while you were working at the 1st January Dam, before you went to the 1st January Dam, or after you were working at that dam? Can you tell us when it was that they killed these people? It was after the 1st January dam work site. It was after working at the 1st January dam site. And who was it that replaced the commune chiefs and unit chairmen who were killed? Answer. It was Ki Ki Lum Kun and Mom. Were these people from your area or were these people who came from a different part of the country? Answer. They were from uh, different parts of the country, from uh, different villages, communes, and districts. Were any of them cadres from the southwest zone, from either Takao or Kampot? <coughs> Answer. I did not know about that. I want to go back to the 1st January Dam and ask you a few questions uh, to clarify uh, a little bit about uh, the role of your commune, Kampong Tama, in the uh, construction of the 1st and 6th uh, January dams. Um, first, um, is it correct that your commune, Kampong Tama, was bordered on the south by the Stung Chanit River and on the north by the Tang Krasang River. Is that correct? Answer. Jinat River was to the south la of Kampong Tmo Pagoda. It was not to the south. It Ce was to the au north. Sud, au nord. What about the Tang Krasang River? 
Was that in your commune or was that in a different part of Santut district? Était-ce dans votre commune ou était-ce ailleurs dans le district de Santut? Answer: It was in Tangrasang commune. C'était dans la commune de Tangrasang. In the commune's office, district office rather. Dans le bureau de district. And in addition to the dam uh, and bridge that was being built on the Stun Chenit, were there canals being built throughout your commune, uh, Camp Antama? Answer, no. Réponse, non. Do you remember uh, how many people from your commune uh, were working on the 1st January Dam? Was it most of the people from the commune or just a small number of people from the commune? Ou est-ce que c'était la plupart des personnes de votre commune? All communes in district, uh, in uh, Santuk district. Toutes les so du district de Santuk étaient ten thousands of uh, workers were gathered from the Santuk district to the work sites. And these workers were living in the Santok district, as I stated. All workers were sent from Santok district, and the 1st January dam site was a major and huge work site. So there were 10,000 of workers working at that site. And the workers from Santuk district that you're talking about, were they all working in your commune, Campon Tama commune? Answer, yes, they worked in Campon Tama commune. Thank you. Uh, I have a, a few follow-up questions to some of the things my colleague asked you about this morning. Uh, you said that there were small uh, wooden latrines that were built in your part of the work site. Um, can you tell us what was done with the sewage or waste from those latrines? Where, where, was, where was it disposed of? de ce qu'il y avait dans ces latrines. Vers où est-ce que cela... Où est-ce que l'on les jetait ou Vers où cela s'écoulait-il Answer. The West was at the place. Les eaux usées no one to take, à cet endroit. No one took Il the waste personne. out of the latrines. Ne so waste and rubbish was everywhere Donc, at uh, the sleeping quarter. Partout, autour du dortoir. And my colleague uh, read to you part of your OCIJ Question. interview uh, in which you testified that um, one of the Khmer Rouge leaders who you saw at the work site spoke over a loudspeaker and in your words Quote, ordered the militiamen to order the people to work faster. Um, in, in this testimony, you referred to militiamen at the work site. Uh, can, can you please tell us who were the militiamen who were at the first January Dam work site? Answer. There were many militiamen. Réponse. Il y avait de nombreux miliciens. They were on 
Chain, On Chain was the chief Il y avait of Chain qui était le chef des miliciens. On Chain. On Chain. And as I stated, there were many, many militiamen. Et comme je l'ai dit, il y avait de nombreux militiens. These militia, were they people at the commune level, uh, district level, sector or zone? Um, and this person you identify as the chief of militia, was he chief of militia for a certain commune or a certain district? Can you tell us a little bit more about who these militia were, where they came from? Answer. Militia men uh, were at uh, the commune, Campontement commune. Militiens étaient à la commune de Campontement. So this uh, person that you named as the chief of militia, you're saying he was the chief of the Campontem militia, or Campontem militia. Do I understand correctly? De la milice de Campontem, ai-je bien compris? Yes, you're right. Réponse: Oui, vous avez raison. What was the role of the militiamen who were at the 1st January Dam site? What did they do there? Answer. Militiamen uh, walked around and got Réponse. workers who uh, did the earth carrying work and uh, who dug the ground. Did these militiamen have weapons? Ces militiens étaient-ils armés? Answer. Militia men had uh, weapons, that is, carbine. They had uh, the Chinese uh, made uh, rifle. Ils portaient des fusils fabriqués en Chine. Uh, I'm going to come back to some more questions Question about the militia in a little bit. I want to turn first to uh, another instant. subject that you talk about in your OCIJ interview, um, which is the arrest of former Lon soldiers. In, um, in your interview, D166-156, uh, ERN references Khmer, 00321786, English 00330719, French 00402982. Um, you stated that you worked for a period as a commune militiaman in Camp on Tama, uh, and you gave the following testimony. Question. Question. When you were a militiaman at that time, how many people did you see arrested? Answer. I saw them arrest approximately 50 people. I believe that many of the people were accused of being policemen, soldiers, or spies. End of quote. Uh, my first question for you, uh, how did Camp on Tama commune uh, go about Comment identifying 
uh, which people were former Law and Old soldiers or policemen? How was it that those people were identified by the commune? Answer. The reason that I know is that uh, people were divided into new people and uh, base people. And uh, as I stated, people were divided into new and based ones. Les gens étaient divisés en deux catégories, peuple de base et peuple nouveau. Let me ask you this. When the new people arrived in your commune ceci, uh, after 17 April 1975, uh, were they required to provide biographies with their personal backgrounds? Answer. Chief of communes uh, went around and uh, gathered gather the, the personal biography. I was not the one who did that. And when you said that that many of the people arrested were policemen and soldiers. Do you remember whether uh, these were people um, who had certain ranks or was anyone who was identified as a former policeman or soldier subject to arrest? Answer. No matter one or was a policeman or a soldier, even the, the base person or was arrested if they committed a mistake. And when you say when if they committed a mistake, what Question type of mistakes dites, are you talking about? Answer. The mistake means the fact that when uh, they assigned us Error. to go to work and uh, we uh, got sick, we did not go to work, uh, we would be uh, punished. Or if uh, we uh, were lazy, we uh, would be considered uh, the one against uh, them, so uh, we would be punished. When the commune militia arrested um, these former Lorsque soldiers and policemen, where were they taken? I did not know where they were sent to. Uh, in your OCIJ statement, and this is at pages Khmer 00321786 through 87, English 00330719 through 720, French 00402982 through 983. Uh, you discussed a security office that was located in Tabeng Kaung, Kaung. And you also stated that the commune militia 
stayed at either Kong Sao or Tabeng Kaung. My question to you, uh, Kong Sao village, when the commune was based there, uh, was there an, a commune office in Kong Sao? Or where was it that the, the common commune militia stayed when you were in Kong Sao village? Kong Sao was not the commune, it was the office, so militia men did not stay Donc, in the commune, the, and as I stated, there was no uh, Donc, Kong dis, Sao commune. commune Kong Sao. It was actually a Kong Sao village in uh, one particular Sao. commune. Dans une commune. The translation may have um, got mixed up. Um, I was referring to Kong Sao village. You indicated that the commune militia stayed there. Uh, my question was, was there an office in Kong Sao village where the militia uh, stayed? Answer, there was no office uh, and militiamen would stay in the shelters or houses. Was Kong Sao village a big place? Did many people live there during the Khmer Rouge regime? Answer. It was a small village and there were about 60 houses in that village. Did you know a person from Kong Sao village named Ut, Ut Seng? who worked at the 1st January Dam for a period. Do you remember Ut Seng? Answer, I do not know this person. Uh, Ut Seng lived in Kong Sao village. And he testified in this courtroom on the 2nd and 3rd of January, uh, 2nd and 3rd of um, uh, June this year. And he remembers you. Uh, he testified that most of the time he saw you working in the villages, but he confirmed that he saw you once at the 1st January Dam worksite. And let me read to you what he testified in this trial. This is from E1 309.1, E1 slash 309.1 at 1355.54. This is what he testified about the time he saw you at the first January dam. Quote, I saw him pass by. He was in charge of people in Sao village, so he could walk past to the work site where his people were working. Perhaps he went there to visit his workers from Kong Sao village. End of quote. My question to you, Mr. Witness, during the time that you were commune militia based in Kong Sao village, did you visit the 1st January dam site to visit the workers from that village? Answer. It was the time that I was uh, carrying earth 
and I was with the other workers doing the same job that is carrying earth. How far was Kong Sao village from uh, the place where you worked at the 1st January Dam? Was it close or was it far away? Answer. I could not give my Réponse. estimates. I do not know how Je far it was. I want to read a uh, another excerpt uh, from your uh, OCIJ interview. Um, this is at Khmer zero zero three two one seven eight six. English 00330719 and French 00402982. Um, this is what you uh, testified in regards to uh, how people were arrested during the time you were in the commune militia. Quote, the orders to arrest people were given from the district and provincial levels. They sent a letter to Tlang, who you later identify as the commune chief, and Tlang orally gave me the order. When I arrested people, I was told the names of the people to be arrested. The people to be arrested were called to attend a meeting at the commune, and those people were tied, put into trucks, and taken to be killed." End of quote. My first question, uh, how did you know that the arrest orders came from the district or provincial level? I didn't know which level the order Réponse. came from. I only knew that it came from ordres. the upper echelon or upper onkar. The only word we heard at the time was onkar, and that Tout order came from the onkar at the above, Les de at the upper level, de for the arrest of uh, those people. However, allow me to specify that non, I did not know at exact level the, or, the order came. And when you said that people to be arrested were called Question. to Lorsque a meeting at the commune, where, where exactly was it that these people were called to? Was it to the commune office or what was the location where people who were arrested were called to go to. They were taken to the commune's office. And where was the commune office in Kampong Tama? It was to the lower part of the first January Dam. C'était en contrebas du barrage du 1er janvier. And uh, the location was to the north of Kampung Tmo Pagoda. Au nord de la pagode de Kampung Tmo. I want to ask you now a few Question. questions on another subject. Um, sur un autre sujet. Which, uh, concerns what happened to the Cham people uh, in your commune. In your OCIJ interview, D166-156, at Khmer 00321787, English 00330719, 
French 00402982. You stated that there were a number of Cham who had been evacuated to your village. That some of those Cham families had been sent to other places and others had been arrested. And I also want to read to you what Hu Tseng, the person who, uh, from uh, Kang Sao village, testified about the Cham families there. In his interview, E3 5267 at Khmer 00271411, English 00282. 2857 French 00482935 uh, He provided the following testimony about the Cham families who lived in Kongsao village. The Cham people were also killed during that era. One day when I was awakening, all the Cham in my village suddenly disappeared. There were 10 Cham families in my village, and of the 10 families, just one person was still alive. At the time, she was away working in the district mobile unit. Uh, Mr. Witness, you were in the commune militia. You've indicated that, testified that there were Cham who were arrested. Can you tell us who it was that ordered the arrests of the Cham people in Kampong Tama commune? The Cham people were arrested uh, with the order uh, coming down Réponse. from the, the sector and the provincial level. The commune chief uh, went to receive Le those instructions, and when he returns to the commune, he implemented the instruction. Do you remember what year it was that this happened? I cannot recall it. Do you know whether uh, lists were made of all the Cham people who lived in your commune before they were arrested? Qui étaient les Cham qui vivaient dans votre commune avant qu'ils ne soient arrêtés I do not know about that. Réponse, je n'en sais rien. The, the last question I want to, the last subject I want to cover with you question, before I see the floor to the civil parties uh, concerns your position uh, in the commune militia. Uh, and I want to give you an opportunity to respond to uh, some testimony uh, we heard uh, from uh, Ut Seng. Uh, in Ut Seng's OCIJ interview at E3 slash 5267, E3 5267, ERN Khmer 00271410, English 00282356 through 57, and French 00482935. Uh, this is what Utseng voilà testified about you and your position during the Khmer Rouge regime. Quote, in the sub-district, there were security personnel who monitored 
They carried clubs and knives, and the knives were covered with dry blood. So on our own, we became afraid of dying. There was a chief executioner named Lun. He had a bicycle, and he carried a sword on his bicycle. Today, he is living at Kwai village, Kampong Tama, sub-district, Santuk district. In 1979, en when the Vietnamese arrived, Lun was arrested and Lun imprisoned. End of quote. The first thing I'd like to ask you about, Mr. Witness, is it, is it, is it correct, uh, Mr. Witness, Exact, that témoin, you were arrested and imprisoned uh, by the Camp on Tom court after the Khmer Rouge regime le, fell in 1979. Regime Khmer Rouge en yes. I was accused of oui. being a village chief and a Khmer Rouge leader. So I was arrested and imprisoned in a Kampong Tom. And during the period that you were in the comp commune militia in Kampong Tom, what was your position? Was there any period in which you were the chief of the Kampong Tama militia? No, I was not a commune militia. I worked non, as a militiaman for the protection for commune, of my village, not for village. the commune. Je ne travaillais pas pour la commune. And Mr. Witness, in, in your OCIJ Question, interview, and this is a D166 slash 156, uh, ERN Khmer 00321787, English 00330720, French 00402983. You stated that you, and I quote, stopped working as a militiaman in 1977 because I did not follow their orders when they ordered me to kill people. I was ordered to get on the truck with the people that they arrested and brought to the security office at Tabeng Kaung. I was ordered to kill people, but I did not obey." End of quote. Mr. Witness, in another part of your OCIJ interview, on the previous page, in regards to orders you received from your commune chief to arrest people, this is what you said, quote, if I had not followed their orders when I went to arrest someone, I would have been killed, end of quote. My question for you, Mr. Witness, uh, is the truth that in order to survive, you had to follow all the orders you received from your superiors, including orders to arrest and orders to execute? Yes. That's uh, what happened Réponse. at the time. Oui, ce qui passé à if one disobeyed uh, si the instruction, that person will be dead. Ordres, il
And if we poke our finger into their affair, then Et we si nous would nous be dead de too. Pas, That's what happened uh, as a reality on the ground during voilà the regime. La réalité sous ce régime. We had to strictly adhere to the instruction or order, otherwise we would not be spared. Sinon For instance, I myself exemple, almost died uh, during the regime. Failli mourir I keep uh, fleeing uh, from time to time. Je pas cessé de fuir. I have one uh, one more question before I pass question, the floor uh, to question, the civil parties. Uh, in the civil. excerpt I read to you, uh, you indicated lu, that you had received orders uh, from your superiors to kill people. Uh, what types of people did your superiors order you to kill during the Khmer Rouge regime? Vos superiors vous ont donné l'ordre d'exécuter des gens sous le régime, mais de quel type de personnes s'agissait-il? There was no need to have the type of people to be killed, regardless if they were bad people or new people. As long as they were accused of making mistakes, they would be taken away and killed. Whether the offense was stealing rice or stealing potato or steal any type of fruit or food, as once the person was caught, then the person would not be spared. And that was what happened during uh, the, the regime, voilà and that was what I observed. Voilà and people, vu, once the starvation hit, he or she could not stand faim, it and would resort to stealing. And if he or she was caught, then he or she would be taken away and killed. People were living in an inhumane condition. Les gens vivaient dans des conditions we inhumaines. lived in a condition worse than that of Nous the animals. Dans des conditions que celles aux animaux. It would be difficult to imagine to imagine that some people survived the regime. Que ont à we ce régime. could hardly breathe. Nous we did not respirer. have any type of freedom of speech at all, and we were very, so very afraid of making any mistake by saying anything out aloud. Thank you for answering my questions today, uh, Mr. Witness, uh, Mr. President. I'll end, end our questions at this time. Question. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Témoin. J'en ai terminé, Monsieur le Président. President and the International Legal Lawyer for Civil Parties, do you have the floor? Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Bonjour à tous. Bonjour, Monsieur le Témoin. Je m'appelle Marie Guiraud. Je suis avocat du collectif des parties civiles et j'ai quelques courtes questions à vous poser sur votre rôle de milicien dans la commune de Compontement et sur le rôle de cette milice sur le chantier du barrage du 1er janvier notamment. La première question que je voulais vous poser, c'est de savoir comment vous aviez été recruté pour être membre de la commune de la milice to become de la commune. Uh, a commune uh, militiaman. People who were recruited to join the militia force were those who showed the respect to the Khmer Rouge. And of course, we knew that they didn't trust us, and nous we didn't nous trust them as well. Nous non plus, nous leur but pas usually, they only recruited those Mais who were général, uneducated or, un, or illiterate. So they would blindly follow the les instructions. Gens qui les instructions 
And that's my testimony of uh, the recruitment voilà, process at the time. Vous avez indiqué aux enquêteurs à l'époque, dans le document que nous citons depuis le début de la journée, en D166, ERN en français 004-02981, anglais 00330719, Khmer 00321785, vous indiquez avoir été envoyé à l'unité des combattants du district après le 17 avril 75. Ma question est la suivante. Fallait-il être un combattant pour être recruté parmi les miliciens ou d'autres personnes pouvaient-elles pouvaient devenir miliciens When they hit, uh, they when they trusted us, then we would be selected to join the militia. And usually, they would recruit or select one or two uh, people from this unit or that unit uh, to join the force. Quel âge, en général, avaient les miliciens qui rejoignaient les forces dont vous parlez I cannot say about the age of the militiamen. Je ne peux pas vous donner l'âge des miliciens. Vous venez d'indiquer que le recrutement se faisait au sein des unités. Est-ce que j'ai bien compris le sens de votre témoignage, que c'était donc au sein des unités de travail que se recrutaient les membres de la milice Yes, they recruited people from uh, the uh, work units, for instance, from a, uh, from a mobile unit or for, from a plowing unit, or from those who worked in uh, the rice fields uh, transplanting rice or rice uh, seedlings. Vous avez indiqué un petit peu plus tôt que les miliciens portaient des, des carabines. Y avait-il un quelconque entraînement pour les miliciens quand ils rejoignaient les rangs de la milice Non. Aucune formation pour eux. Dans, le, dans la même déclaration, donc au même ERN, vous avez déclaré concernant l'unité d'agents secrets dont vous faisiez partie qu'il y avait 12 membres. Pouvez-vous un petit peu nous expliquer quels étaient ces 12 membres, d'où venaient-ils, quel âge avaient-ils Vous souvenez-vous de quelques éléments que vous pourriez partager avec nous aujourd'hui Now I cannot recall their age. Non, je ne me souviens pas de leur âge. I can only recall some of the members of the unit. Je me souviens de certains membres de l'unité uniquement. Those people came from different villages. Ces gens venaient de différents villages. Namely, Prasat, Tropeng Pring. Etc. Et so they were selected from various villages. Ils étaient choisis dans And les I villages. did not know every one of them. Mais je ne les connaissais pas tous. Quand vous dites qu'ils étaient choisis, avaient-ils la possibilité et aviez-vous vous, vous la possibilité de refuser d'entrer dans la milice? I, in fact, didn't want to, to join them 
But en I réalité, je ne voulais afraid. pas les rejoindre, mais j'avais peur. As I was being monitored at On that me time. surveillait à cette époque. I was living with the villagers and I had a sympathy avec les villageois, for them de as I saw them not having enough food to Je eat. Voyais bien ne and you could uh, say that uh, I was a thief as I stole rice uh, for Et them. Dire que un voleur, They parce were que je given only uh, three cans of rice cooked in a large pot for a large group of people and that was apparently not enough. So I secretly pas. stole some food and uh, some rice and given to those people and they were very uh, happy with that. So uh, at that time, my uh, group of three people, that is chief, uh, deputy, and member, chef, we drilled a hole underneath in order to steal uh, rice from the rice man. And as a result of what I did for those people, uh, they survived, and they included cela, some of the former teachers who were educated people. If they were to live elsewhere, they would not be survived. And in fact, they they were, there was a request for them to be transferred to live elsewhere, and if I were to allow that, then si they would be killed. But I refused uh, to, uh, to honor that request. Quest, and I kept them with me, and those teachers survived. And here I am being frank with you. On the issue of the uh, militia, Pour ce qui est des it was uh, a routine work for me to to administer the village from the Mon perspective of the uh, militia in order to provide security, to know about the activities in uh, the uh, village. And this is still a current practice in uh, the village level. And please uh, don't confuse that uh, security, uh, security force as the force that I was in charge was one tasked uh, with killing people. No. It was the opposite. I was there to protect the village and to protect the lives of my villagers. Merci, Monsieur le Témoin, de nous parler avec tant de franchise pour reprendre votre mot. Le recrutement des miliciens se faisait-il de manière secrète Est-ce que les villageois, les travailleurs, savaient qui étaient miliciens et qui ne l'étaient pas At that time, even the uh, village chief, the village chief would not even know that his day would come. We lived in, in an empty space, we, in the dark, we didn't know anything about it, and of course, they they put people to monitor the activities of everyone, regardless of their status, whether they were a villagers or they were a part of the village leadership. In Gongsao village, where I lived, people understood my generosity, my kindness, and sometimes they, they offered me a cooked rice. They, they, they brought the rice to me. And even after, they would kill their uh, chicken in order to, to cook food for me. But I must tell you that at that time, I refused. I refused to eat uh, the, those uh, rice or, or, or chicken, because if I were to do so, then I would be accused of betraying Onka, betraying the upper echelon. So I refused, and then I would eat uh, commonly with uh, my uh, villagers. 
Je me permets de vous interrompre parce que j'ai très peu de temps et je vous remercie de bien vouloir répondre de manière synthétique à mes questions, si vous pouvez. Je voulais vous citer un passage de l'audition de, de Hudson dont nous avons parlé un petit peu plus tôt dans la journée qui a été entendu le 3 juin 2015 devant cette chambre et qui indiquait, et je vous, je vous cite ce qu'elle a déclaré, ce qu'il a déclaré, « Nous ne pouvions pas savoir s'il y avait des miliciens parce que nous étions tous habillés en uniforme noir. » Est-ce que vous confirmez cela, qu'il était impossible de distinguer qui était milicien et qui ne l'était pas parce que les miliciens portaient tous des uniformes noirs Soldiers all dressed in dark attire. But yes, that is uh, correct. The black attire applied across the board for ordinary villagers and for militiamen as well. What I mean there is that militiamen dressed in black attire as ordinary people and even soldiers, soldiers were wearing black attire as well. Est-ce que les miliciens étaient intégrés au sein des unités et travaillaient et surveillaient les travailleurs de l'intérieur, à l'intérieur des unités Within the units and kept watch over the workers within the units. And sir, militiamen also worked uh, with people, and everyone was in the field helping farming and uh, transplanting. Militiamen uh, were originated from the uh, peasant families, and everyone uh, was working in the field. Militiamen also worked uh, with us. But they had additional tasks to watch over people in the villages. And why? Because uh, it was afraid that uh, people uh, would uh, not uh, live along with each other or had problems with each other. That is the additional task of militiamen. Je vous remercie. Lorsque vous avez été entendu par Thank les you. enquêteurs, vous avez indiqué, donc je suis toujours à ce même document, le D166-156 et au même ERN cité précédemment, que vous aviez ordre, et je cite, de surveiller, contrôler le réfectoire et d'arrêter les gens qui volaient des choses. Est-ce que nous sommes d'accord que les miliciens avaient ordre de surveiller et de contrôler le réfectoire Est-ce que cela, cela faisait partie des tâches qui étaient assignées aux miliciens à l'époque Réponse. Yes, uh, they received uh, oui. such order. Ils recevaient de tels ordres. As for me, en ce qui I, I did not uh, do like uh, what you have just Je ne described. Pas ce que vous venez de And if uh, people wanted to eat, I would si uh, give manger, food alors, uh, secretly to people because everyone uh, wanted uh, to live. Tout le monde voulait vivre. And anyone who came to me, whether Regardless of where they were from, I would uh, give them food to eat secretly. Est-ce que les miliciens avaient pour responsabilité de chercher les personnes qui évitaient d'aller au travail et de les ramener au travail Est-ce que ça, cela faisait partie des tâches des miliciens Did not go to work and forcing them to go to work was that one of the tasks assigned to the militiamen Answer. Many militiamen died already. There, there is only two or three militiamen survived at the period. In 1979, people were killed by the people because uh, those people uh, 
committed uh, bad things. And after 1979, uh, some of them were killed by ordinary people. If one uh, did the job or task without uh, considering uh, the bad and the good, and then they would not live uh, until today. Si and people kill ordinary people, travail, uh, got angry and killed uh, the, those people who committed uh, bad things after 1979. And uh, I believe if uh, one experienced the uh, Pol Pot regime or the genocide regime, that they would understand. Uh, many people were killed during that period. And uh, for the young generation, they uh, do not believe that uh, the 1st January dam site was built by manual labor. They believe that uh, it was built by uh, machineries, and there was there were dams, there were canals, uh, because it was the result of manual labor, because uh, we were carrying earth at that time, doing different jobs. Thank you.